Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Bid had 1,000 here. Um, this is a major show. This is an important show. Uh, I want to start by saying that in order to keep this show going in a linear path, I want to uh, explain a few things to you. Uh, the guy, I recalled that guy about the Dreamcast. Uh, he never called back, which, which, which means he's probably already sold the system. It was, a, it was a Dreamcast in the package or whatnot, whatever. So we didn't get the Dreamcast. Uh, we got our games. Our Atari games are up on the shelf. That's, an imp that's important. We got the games up on the shelf there. So that's a big development. Um, we've been getting burnt at the thrift shops. Uh, the last uh, couple days that I've been going to the thrift shops, I mean, it's been dry. I haven't been able to get anything. So, I mean, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes you don't... You, you get skunked. I call it getting skunked. So, we went to the thrift shops and, and we got skunked. Um, the, 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 the number one thing I'm working on right now is a new television. Uh, if it's, if it's, you, you guys know I don't like to spend money. You know, I'm the kind of guy I, I water down the Windex. Uh, so, I don't like to spend money, but a TV, I feel this is an important purchase that we get a nice TV. Something that's uh, that's that's clear. Something that you're going to be able to see. Because I feel a lot of guys do review cha uh, review channels on on YouTube, and they do a fantastic review. But it, it's hard to watch the game because sometimes you, you know the resolution is really bad, and, and that kind of I think that interferes with the with the quality of the review. So if we're going to spend money anywhere, we're going to do it on on a nice TV. So I think I need like four or five hundred bucks to pick up like. And you know an LCD or something, or something flat screen, and that's, that'll also conserve room in here because you know we don't have a lot of room. So I went to my parents' house. I I play the drums, so up in the attic I have a few expensive pieces of drum equipment that uh, that I just put up on eBay, and and that, and that was very difficult to do because those those pieces are like they're like my children, but. Uh, you know, those are sacrifices you have to make and, you know, sacrifices for the show. So we got to make sacrifices in life, right, guys? I mean, I live in an apartment now, so I can't really beat on the drums like I used to. I mean, you know, the drums are something I have to worry about when I finally, you know, work my way into a house or whatnot. So, so we, we'll do that so we can get ourselves a TV. And then uh, that'll bring us into the next phase of of what we're trying to do here and that's review video games and that's what leads me to this show and I'm really nervous about doing this show because this particular show because I feel that this show will be the most important show that I do I I don't care if I do 2000 shows from now this is going to be the most important one because this is where we establish uh, this is where I feel that I, I establish my credibility as a game reviewer. And I'm going to explain that because I watch a lot of review guys uh, on YouTube and, and I like to watch younger guys do reviews of uh, cl classic games that I grew up with. Strictly because I'm curious to see you know, what they think about the games because it's a fresh it's a fresh take on what people think of, of video games it's not like when we were kids and everybody would talk about games and and there'd be games that everybody would like and people kinda go along with the crowd no these these are fresh reviews on on the games and I'm always interested to, to see what what younger guys or younger kids think about you know the graphics the sound uh, the gameplay and and see how that corresponded to to maybe my my opinions of the games when I first played them. It's just a, it's just really interesting. So, but uh, what really burns me, and I mean, what I find completely unacceptable, is when a younger guy will do a review on a a, a classic game, and give it a bad review, and compare it to newer games and to me that is like it com complete I'll give you an example um, 
A guy did a review on a, tur a, a TurboGrafx game, Silent Debuggers. Now, for me, Silent Debuggers, when that game came out, that's the first first-person shooter that I've ever played. And as far as I know, that's the first first-person shooter that 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 came out but you know you know people will argue that with you all day long I'm sure there are other ones maybe for a computer or or for a system that I don't know about but for me that was the first one and that game was done so well graphics were great sound was great the story had to give you this feeling of like isolation you were on this like this space outpost and you know you were trying to find your way out of there the story kind of took some twists and turns it had some like Japanese like animation type graphics uh, the game was like it real colorful real it was blazing fast it was just it was a great game and I remember watching this kid review it and compare it to modern day first person shooters you know I felt like jumping through the screen and, and punching the kid in the stomach till he shit his pants but that's that's the thing you know I feel a guy like older guys can come and they can give a game a review and give a game in a review and give like a point of reference because we were there when the game comes came out we understood the tide of video gaming at the time the environment uh, you know you gotta understand some of these games when they came out they were groundbreaking and I don't think a lot of people understand that these were uh, games that really, you know, wowed people, and today they might not seem as polished and whatnot, but I think an older generation video gamer like myself can give you some of that insight, and I feel, I feel that's important. So, this one's probably going to go into a couple parts, because I'm going to go on here. So, we're going to start 1981, uh, 1982. Um, before school, my mother would take me over to my friend Todd's house because his mother would drive us to school. And uh, she was a higher up in, in Mattel, and he had an Intellivision. So before school, we would play uh, a game, I think it was called uh, Star Strike. And it was like a, a game where you move the target around on the screen and you, can, you could shoot spaceships. And the cool thing about it is we used to play that two players and one guy would control the target. I remember Todd would control the target and I would control the fire controls. And you know he would have to put some lead on, on the spaceship. And so you know you had to fire just anyway. We had hours of fun on that game. And we would play it in the morning and then go to school and I'd come home and I'd ask if I could go over to Todd's after school. We'd go over there and we'd play some more. And I guess, because his mom had the inside cut at, in, at Mattel, this, this Intellivision was loaded. It had the Intellivoice on it. So when you would play games like baseball, and you would strike out, you'd hear, You're out! That's the sound it used to make. You're out! And I mean, even back then, we would, you would crack up at it. But even today, it's even funny, you know, because it, it sounds so ridiculous. Or the, the crowd, if you, if you got a home run, it was like, you know, and it had that same crowd, generic crowd through a, a bunch of, uh, through a couple of other games. So, I mean, Intellivoice rocked the house. Um, and that's where, basically where it started. And from that time, playing before school, you know, as big of a fan of video games as I am, video games are no good for kids. Because when I would go to school, I hated school. All I wanted to do was come home and play video games. That's all I had on my mind. And you know, for a kid, you know, they they send you to to school to school. You have no control. You you can't say no. But when you got home and you played the video games, you had control. And it was like you're in your own little world. So that's where it all started for me. And um, from there. Uh, I would go to uh, my other friend's house. My mother was friends with another lady down the block, and, and I met my other friend Rex, and he had uh, Texas Instruments. And I don't know the model number. I don't even know the games that we played for it because this is just going way back. Uh, and we played this one very briefly, 
he had a Texas, and I remember he's, t he's telling me it's Texas Instruments, but I'm like, uh, Texas uh, Instrument, I'm like, what, uh, what do you play, music on a thing? I, I, as a kid, I didn't comprehend what it was, and it had a couple of learning games on it, which were like, you know, coming off the Intellivision, that was like, but uh, Rex's father was really into uh, uh, electronics and whatnot, so, uh, you know, Rex kind of had the latest stuff. Um, Shortly after the Texas Instruments, Rex had a ColecoVision. And now ColecoVision, for me, was like... Uh, to me, it was head and shoulders above the Intellivision. And he had this ColecoVision, and we would play games like uh, Space Fury, Great Shooter. Um, and the, the ColecoVision had some great graphics. It had it had cool sound. Uh, the ColecoVision was was for me. It was a really uh, upgraded system from the television. Uh, what games do we play? play? Pit Stop, uh, Decathlon. You know, where you take the controller and you move it back and forth. I, I, if I remember, you had to do it in a rhythmic fashion to gain speed, or maybe just as fast as you could. But that was a fun game. And I remember begging my parents for a ColecoVision. Oh my God, what, the one Christmas that went by, can I please have a ColecoVision? Please, please, please. Never came. So from the ColecoVision, I could remember going to my cousin's house, and they had an Atari 2600. And now I don't know how I'm jumping around here. This is how I got introduced to these systems. I, this is not necessarily a timeline of when these systems came out. But they had an Atari 2600, and... I remember not thinking very highly of it. I mean, I played in television. I played ColecoVision. To me, graphically and sound-wise, these systems were above the 2600. But I can remember playing games like Space Jockey, uh, Defender, uh, Space Invaders, E.T., uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and just not, not being all that impressed with the with the Atari 2600 so finally um, the following Christmas I begged and begged and begged for uh, for Coleco and I got it and my luck with video games has gone like this every time I get a video gaming system it goes out of business that uh, I wind up getting it late and it goes out of business. So I remember when I got it, when I got my ColecoVision, which I was so excited about, I can remember going to the store, going to Toys R Us, and they, there was like four games for it because ColecoVision was on the way out. So I played games like, my favorite game for Coleco of all time is James Bond. Very hard to get game to get these days. I've been looking for it on, on eBay and whatnot. You, you, you pay some money for it. Money that I'm not willing to pay because I think I'm going to find it somewhere. And... Uh, Terrific game, uh, you know, Smurfs, anyway, I could go on about ColecoVision, really was the, the, the system that brought me into video gaming system. I had it at home, I could sink a lot of time into it, I could borrow games from my friend Rex, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, so, but like I said, then it became almost impossible to get games for. So, that was the only thing that left a bad taste in my mouth about the ColecoVision. But then... My buddy Rex moved on and got a, uh, his father was huge on computers. I remember going over there and this guy had a computer in like three rooms of the house. And for the time, we're talking, you know, mid-80s here, uh, yeah, that was, that was mind-boggling. Nobody had that. And my friend Rex got a Commodore 64. And I mean, this Commodore, I remember... I didn't understand how it worked. I mean, he would, you know, do all the prompts and whatnot, and he knew how to do that. But for me, I would go over there and watch this thing, and he'd have a disc, and it would have like 25 games on it. And to me, this was like the greatest thing ever. He'd pop in this disc, all these games would come up, they took a long time to load, and I can remember seeing these like really impressive graphics, like, because these games had to be cracked to get put onto, uh, like pirated, to get put on, compressed on these discs, 25, 30 games on a disc. And I can remember the graphics things, the graphics screens for the, for the, for the guys that cracked these games, and it would say like, uh, cracked by Eagle, and it would have a picture of an Eagle, or cracked by Cyclone, 
and it'd have this wild graphics and whatnot. And uh, the games for that were, were awesome. Games like uh, Bump and Jump and, and Toy Bazaar and Hero and Hunchback and, and Karate Games and, and Gyr Gyrus and 